traditions of the church, and it's one of the great uh, seven major feasts of the Lord. Uh, yesterday, after the services, one of the children came up and asked, why do we have palms? Anybody know? It's a good question. I can only think of three answers. No one know? Well, one of the simple reasons, because this is what they did on the day. But in the church, what is the symbol of the palm? And we see it several times in Scripture in both the Old Testament and the New Testament. We see it in uh, the book of Exodus and Leviticus when the Lord directed Moses to, to decorate and to beautify the tabernacle and the temple. Uh, but for the purposes of today, uh, I think the three main reasons is because of to remember the highness of God, the holiness of God, and the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> and so today we'll talk about these three points and how they relate to uh, the Lord's entry, not only into Jerusalem or into the church, but into our hearts. Because <clears throat> this is the purpose of whatever the church is trying to do, it's trying to help build us and build our relationship with our Savior. <clears throat> So when the people cried out Hosanna, which was an early um, right uh, for, for centuries, they said, as, as we sing in the hymn, one of the things they said was Hosanna in the highest. The, the highness or the loftiness of God, God is praised in the highest. And because the palms were probably the tallest things around and the tallest trees around, it reminded us of the highness of God and the lowliness of man. So they put the palms not only in their hands, but they put them on the road. And the things they covered themselves with, the, the outer garments they covered themselves with, said God is the one who covers us because he is the great one. <clears throat> and so um, as one of the uh, patriarchs said, as pilgrims we go up to him, and as a pilgrim he comes down to us from on high. Uh, and he takes us up with him during this week it's the ascent to the cross. He takes us up with him, not only to heaven, but first we have to go through the door of heaven, which is the cross, which we'll talk about, uh, God willing, this week. And so the Lord comes into the world in the incarnation. He comes into Jerusalem on this day, and he comes into our hearts, hopefully, every day after that. Uh, <clears throat> and the unique thing is that although the Lord is high and great, and mighty and powerful, he came in humility. As Zechariah the prophet says, Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and having salvation, lowly, and riding on a donkey. <clears throat> so uh, this great humility is still to be recognized of his greatness. Um, <clears throat> and that, that's probably what makes him great. The person who is not great is trying to prove to others that they're great, or to prove to themselves that they're great. And this is the reason for the pride. But the one who is already great doesn't need to prove anything. <clears throat> and so uh, the Lord reminds us of the little ones, and, and he recognizes the little ones, especially today, where he, he points to the fact of the beauty of the children when he says, out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have perfected praise. <clears throat> Uh, a while ago, we had uh, someone in the church pass away, and uh, the majority of the people there were not were not Orthodox. <clears throat> so anyway, I said some words, tried to prepare a lot because possibility for people to convert. Anyway, it, I don't know what what happened in terms of, of of the results of that, but they let different people come up after to speak. It was not Orthodox ceremony. So anyway, a little girl came up from our, our congregation and started just to speak. And it was one of the most powerful and beautiful and spiritual talks that, that I've heard in a long time. <clears throat> so there was another, uh, I think it was Christian next to me, and he said, out of the mouth of babes. <laughs> and so I, I realized we can't ignore the power and the beauty and the strength and the spirituality of the children. Because the Lord remembered them on this great day. <clears throat> so... As a king, everything as a as a king, everything might not seem great 
because he is the greatest and the most powerful. But the Lord still remembers the little. And as a little child, if you remember, uh, have you ever visited your home or the place of your childhood where you grew up after many years? At least when I did, one thing I remembered was that <clears throat> everything looks so much smaller than what I remember, right? Because you're little and everything looks big, right? This is what the Lord is trying to portray today. When we see him as big, we remind ourselves as small. Um, and just because we mature in age, or we might even grow spiritually, we still have to remember ourselves as little before the throne of God. <clears throat> so don't lower your perception of God because you've known him so long, or because you have matured in age. Um, the beauty of God is new every day, and the glory of God should be remembered in our life and in our heart and in our minds every day. So we lower ourselves in our own eyes that we may see how great and how high um, the Lord God is. And that's why this feast is so special to uh, many of us. The second point is, uh, although the palm trees are very tall right, and high, um, <clears throat> But there's a verse that says, the righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. So the palm tree, because it reaches the heavens, and it's very strong and very difficult to, to fall, um, it reminds us of the righteous person. Uh, as we'll see tonight, after entering the house of the Lord, and even St. Matthew, actually the first three evangelists mention uh, the, what the Lord does after the cleansing of the temple. Sorry, after the entrance into the temple, he cleanses the temple. And he kicks out uh, the people who are there for the wrong reasons. Uh, and he criticized them for not treating it out as it should be the house of prayer. Seeing, saying your house is left to you desolate. Um, <clears throat> and actually, how many times did the Lord cleanse the temple? The first three evangelists mention it's after Palm Sunday. But St. John says, no, he also did it once a few years before in the beginning of his ministry. Um, and so I guess they, they didn't learn the lesson. After three years, he went, said, okay, I'm going to start the service. Um, but first we have to send the message of making the, the house of God the house of prayer. And then three years later, he comes again and has to do the same thing. Um, last year, as, as you know, it, we were limited or prevented from celebrating um, the, the Passion Week in, in most of the churches. Um, and many people were disappointed. And they said, we're robbed of a blessing. And many, many people actually managed to have a, a special and different blessing of going deeper and finding the Lord regardless of the circumstances, which is good. And met, this year, many people are happy to join. But we can't forget the lesson that, that God tried to remind us of, is that this is a house of prayer and we have to come close to God, not to get distracted with, with all the other things, but to remember the purpose of this. <clears throat> uh, and even though we're prevented from entering the church at, at one point in, in our lives, that doesn't mean we're prevented from being in touch with God. It uh, reminds me of St. Mary of Egypt. She was living a life of sin, as many of you know. Um, and she was not prepared to enter the church, but she wanted to for the wrong reasons. And what happened? God did not allow her. She couldn't, she couldn't go in. Uh, it was like a force preventing her from it. And then she realized that it was because of her, her sinfulness. Um, and she repented. And then God allowed her in. Uh, she realized, she repented, she, was, she entered, and she left a different person. When she left, she didn't go home. She didn't go living the life of sin. She went into the wilderness for many years. Some, um, some uh, references say about 46 years, just in the wilderness. Uh, and so finally, when she was allowed to enter, she left a different person. And she stayed in the middle of nowhere by herself, without the church, actually, um, but she grew in spirit. She became a great saint. That doesn't mean it's okay not to come to church often, but in her circumstances, she was 
prevented from it. Um, <clears throat> so the idea here is that the holiness happens through the church. But when I leave the church, I take the church with me. I take God with me. Um, it's, I don't leave him here. Um, <clears throat> and so the people of, of today, or at least of tonight, didn't remember what the Lord did before many years. And he had to repeat the, uh, the circumstances of what he did three years before. And maybe in part because of that, they, they didn't accept him after this. Um, even today, people proclaimed his, his holiness and his highness and his power and his kingship. But they were expecting a different king. Um, <clears throat> anyways. So the last point is... Uh, the victory. We see the palm tree in the book of Revelation, the palm leaves. The righteous who are clothed with the blood of the Lamb of God and cleansed by the, the Lamb of God wear the right robes and they have palm branches in their hands and they cry out saying, salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne. Uh, and so this is a sign of victory. Um, in the early days, the soldiers who came back from battle and who were victorious would, would have this same type of procession um, with the palm branches. Um, and when St. John sees this, actually, one of the elders, most likely one of the 24 priests, asks him, do you, do you know what's happening? Do you know who these are? He says, you know, <laughs> tell me. So, so the priest tells him, these are the ones who came out of the great tribulation. They, they, they suffered. Uh, and they washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God, and they serve him day and night in his temple. Uh, <clears throat> and so this is the victory, that they shall not hunger anymore, nor thirst. The sun will not strike them or burn them. Uh, the lamb who is in the midst of the throne of God will shepherd them and lead them. Uh, so this is the sign of the victories for the soldiers of Christ who struggle in this world. We have hope in Christ because he is our victor. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords who has trampled every enemy, uh, the enemy of death and the enemy of the evil one. So we have nothing to fear. <clears throat> this is why, uh, yes, there's no trees in heaven, but they're holding the palm branches for, for this reason, because Christ is our vi victory. Um, so today we'll conclude with this. Uh, some people were, were thinking, oh, well, we have a cross and a throne in, in, in our heart. Um, and the Lord descended from his throne in heaven to, to ascend the cross. And sometimes when we see this throne empty, we sit on the throne and we let Christ be crucified. But what Christ wants us to do is to ascend the cross and put the Lord on his throne. Um, <clears throat> And, and that's in a sense of what we're doing today and what we will be doing the next few days. But what happens when we crucify ourselves and our desires? The Lord says, okay, I paved the way to the cross. I want you to reign with me. So the cross becomes a throne itself, as we see in Good Friday. Um, and there is no difference, actually, between the Lord crucified on the cross and the Lord reigning on the throne and the Lord sitting on the donkey. It's all the same. Christ is glorified. Um, but he is the one who suffered in order to glorify um, us. He's already full of glory. Um, <clears throat> so God willing, uh, the, this week, we remember the throne and the cross. There's no way to, uh, to the king except through uh, the cross of suffering. Um, <clears throat> and if we accept this willingly, we find the joy and the beauty and the love and the unity that we have with our crucified Lord. May the Lord always be glorified, not only in the church, but in our hearts every day. Glory be to him now and from to the age of the